Hello again and welcome back to the channel and this week on the old magic roundabout we've got an oldie we're going back in time this is a, uh, an early dinky Fraser Nash Rapier Nash sorry or Fraser Nash I can't remember what it says on the base I'll have a look at a bit um, yeah I'm not totally sure what series this one is but I will check and put it in the description and I'll put it in the uh, title yeah fairly straightforward this one we're going to do the usual with the old dinkies a sympathetic restoration I'm not going to go overboard with the details we're going to do it as clean as we can as it was originally okay as you watch this go round and I'd just like to welcome all the old friends of the channel back. Thanks very much for staying about. And to welcome any new friends aboard. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. I uh, look forward to your comments at the end of the videos. Yeah, okay. Let's get it off the magic. Let's get it on the bench. And have a good look at it. Okay, then here we go. This is a, um, a Fraser. A phrase. A phrase. <laughs> a Fraser Nash BMW sports car okay that's what it is being over painted in this orangey colour now these were produced according to my book by Edward Force let me have a look uh, where was it the Gonda yeah the Gonda Fraser, there you go. Fraser Nash BMW sports car. 1940, then it stopped for the war, and 1946 to 53. Number 38A, yeah, two seater. Cast body, steering wheel, so the steering wheel missing. Black tyres, and it says in here blue body and hubs, grey seats, light grey body, red seats and hubs, light grey body. Brown seats, black hubs, light grey body, blue seats and hubs. Other combinations may exist. Colour shades vary. So there you go. There it says, colour shades vary. So that's a quick rundown of what it is. Now, I've already ground off the axle. So we'll pull that out. That's only one need to do. And the reason that is because it's bent and he's straightening. So the only reason I've took that off, normally they're like that, I'll just do it as they are. Now these bases, on these older dinkies, uh, with this type of um, post, the mushroom is not spread out too far on the base, so you can actually pop the base without removing, uh, drilling it out if you want to. Um, I, I think Luke mentioned it on what is uh, Jaguar video, but the later ones, you won't be able to do it because the mushroom is spread out too far. Um, it's only if you want to. So you can get it underneath there. And if you work it gently, you can pop it out. Yeah. And it will come out. You might bend a little bit of these, but you can soon straighten it out if you do. It's up to you. You don't have to do that. You can drill it out if you want. So that's that. So the base does need a bit of straightening, as you can see. So that's the base. The back axle it doesn't need anything, it's just straight axle, nothing on it. So you can just pull these out. Okay. These hubs have been painted as well. It looks like it's a grey green underneath there. So I might drill these out later, I might just pop the base back on. Don't know. Alrighty, so that's it really. Fairly straightforward casting. This is unlike the others where they've got headlights and bumpers and radiator grills what can be broken off. This is pretty straightforward. There is a steering wheel missing. I'll try and find one or locate one for that. I've got a replacement windscreen for it. You can make these. They're quite easy to make, actually, by yourself. Um, quite a few of these are generic, uh, depending on what scale, uh, what series you are. I'll just pop it out here just to show you. So you can if you want to, before you put this in, copy it. Straightforward enough, which is what I've done in previous previous ones. 
speaker. And that little tab at the end fits in the slot of the base there. You see the slot there, look. Fits in that, that letterbox. So it goes gives you the angle like that. So they're quite easy to copy. But I, I, I've got this one because I was ordering some stuff from this the, the seller. So um, to make up a, a set amount of money that I wanted to spend, I've got a couple of screens of this type. And I can I can trace around them, make a template, and can always make more. Right, that's it, stripping time. That's it then, that's all our bits cleaned up. I'm not going to the point of taking all the casting lines off because this is not the idea of the object of the exercise. It's to keep it as original as I can. So, yeah, I've gone around, wire brushed it, wire wheeled it, bit of filing, get some of the around the edges where it's been bashed around has been played with around there around there smooth them off a little bit yeah and around these back fenders here uh mud guards fenders whatever you want to call them so that's ready for paint axles are down here ready to be done wheels ready to be done and i found a steering wheel and where's my pin and a steering wheel pin there so we're good to go so paint and primer time Get his paint in blue, hubs blue, and it's going to have a grey seat in it. Okay, well, we'll hand paint that anyway. I'm not going to paint it, paint it. I like to hand paint. Excuse me, tired now, it's getting late. Okay, then, right, I'm just going to show you this before I continue. I was painting this last night. As you know, it was a nice warm day yesterday, not a real problem, and it was getting evening time. It's still daylight out, it's still warm outside. So I thought I'd take a chance and I'll paint this without the heater on. And this is what you get. You get a blooming. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just showing you this. This is what happens. If you uh, don't keep the casting and you paint warm and you paint in the right, I mean, you paint outside if you like, but I can't paint outside here because... Um, there's too many bugs flying about and stuff falling off trees, so I don't paint outside. Uh, I had the shed door open. It was warm in here, warm enough for me to sit the T-shirt and shorts. But obviously the humidity was a bit high or whatever, uh, and you get blooming. Uh, I've had this once before. That's why I use my heater uh, to heat things up, even in the warm weather, especially in the evening time. I think it was around about 5 o'clock, up to 5, um, something like this. So... Yeah, you think you can paint over the top of this, but you'll it'll always bloom. So what I intend to do is to, um, I've got some wet and dryers here, I've got 1500, 2000, 2500. I'll just give it a rub down uh, and then I shall put some more of the blue over the top. This is Ford Maritime Blue. Um, this is how I get out of it, if we can. So why don't I go too rough, I'll start off with 2000. It's just to basically get the bloom out of it. So, you know, it's, it happens. You know, now and again. So there's no need to panic over it. So just get it and just gently go over the top. Get some of this uh, bloom paint out of it. And we'll do it again. That's basically what we do. Yeah. Yeah, I have a lot of bugs. Because I've got a big tree outside, as you probably know. I've told you plenty of times before. And I'm at the bottom of the garden, and we've got quite a nice garden, and you still get a lot of bugs, flies, bloody all sorts coming in and out. Edge hogs we've got flipping. The occasional fox troops through uh, and stuff. So, yeah, there's all manner of things. And if your bird's crapping off the top of the tree, so you can't really put anything outside. So, yeah, that's what we do here. So I'm just going over this. It doesn't matter if the paint comes nearly virtually off. It's got a primer underneath. I'm not bothered about scuffing around here and stuff like this as long as I get the, most of the bloom off. Yeah. So we'll see how we get on with it. Yeah. So that's what we do. That's how we, This is how we get out of it anyway. Because if you went ahead and put a lacquer on this, yeah, the lacquer will shine it up. No, it doesn't. 
surprisingly. I did that the first ever time I did it years ago. I thought, yeah, I'll whack a, coat, a couple of coats of lacquer on that. It'll be all right. No, it never did. It never did. It always came up dull. Always. So, there you go. This is a little, little bit. Just show that we all make mistakes. This is me just trying to be in a bit hurrying up, really, I suppose. Trying to get in front, trying to do stuff too quick. It's always a danger. Of coming up with stuff like that. Anyway, this is what I'm doing. This is how it is. So, hopefully it'll all come good in the end. If I put another coat of paint on it and it still doesn't look right, I'll be stripping it all off. So it's worth a go beforehand. There you go. All right, I'm going to get on with this. This is all blue redone. A lot better now. Yeah. So it's the LED. The lights got above me reflecting off it. I've got two big LED bulbs above me. So yeah. Now, what we've got to do is do some detailing. Got the seats to paint grey. Steering wheel to paint. Paint the grill and the lights. And that's about it. Like I say, it's going to be sympathetic restoration. Wheels are all done. Base plate is done. I went ahead and drilled these. I'm going to drill these posts out. Yeah, I decided to take it all take it all away on this one. So yeah, that's the base. All done. Okay. The radio. So I need that need that to dry for another twenty four hours before I touch that. Not well before I start banging around and <laughs> putting all stuff. I might put the wheels back on and uh, pin the axles over. Because they'll be alright. And put the tires on. Touching that, I'll leave it for a bit. Yeah, because it's a warm night again. It's very mild, very muggy, and uh, the paint will take longer to cure. It's the thing you've got to watch out for when it's warm nights like this. Even though you painted it, it just takes a while to cure. Alrighty, that's it. Details painted. Yeah, it's nice to do a nice and easy one now and again, just to uh, get you back in the swing of things. Yeah, there's only a couple of details on here, front grill. There's nothing painted on the back. I've done the seats, grey, just a thin coat of grey. And I put the steering wheel back in, because you really want to put that in before you put the window in, because you've got to bend that right down, out of the way, because the window comes through, as we're going to show in a minute. Yeah, so it's come out okay. Like I say, it's nice to do a nice, easy one. Now and again, chuck one in there. These are great for beginners as well, because there's not much to them. And they all need doing, so I might as well do them. Okay, I'll get the magic carpet out. And, da -da -da, now you see it, there you don't. That's uh, my missus made this for me. Bless her. So, what have we got? we got the wheels are on, peened over. It's not rocket science, you use the format tap around with the hammer these are easy to do because nothing in the way you can drop the spare wheel down you can drop the wheel down there bang 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 that's easy to do there's the base there's the windscreen in there we'll get out in a second there's the other axle there's the other wheel and a couple of jolly old rivets which I've just Checking, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Right there, the windscreen. Excuse the noise, it's chucking now rain outside on my shed. As you can see, the shape that we've got here. Now this piece there goes in a slot. There. Well, it's supposed to. 
I haven't dry fitted this because sometimes you get these in, you can't get them back out again without breaking them. So that should just fit in there like so. And it, a bit of maneuverability. I don't know if we'll be able to get it in or not. We'll have a look. We'll have a look. See what happens. Right. I'll keep the pressure pushing it that way. It should. There you go. That should poke through there, but I think it's a bit. It looks a bit. Just push that down a bit. I don't want to break it. We could do with going down a, a little bit more. side there. Right, okay, what we're gonna do is withdraw that and just shave a bit off here somewhere. Uh it's best to use Gently. Still a little bit there, isn't it? You have to do that sometimes with these repo parts. Mess with them a little bit. Try and get them to... in oh, that seems to be a bit better A bit off this side, yeah.
All right, we'll just try this on the, before we go any further. Yeah, somewhere. Yeah, that's better. You see the tongue sitting through now. That's how it's supposed to be like that. Okay. Yeah, that's got it. That's got her. Alright, let's put the... I'll give the windscreen a wipe in a minute when we've done this. Come on, you toe back. Come on, up and over. Up and over, jump. There you go. All right, let's get the super duper out. Hold it up, make sure we get it in the window in the right place. Come on now, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? There you go, it's there somewhere. There it is. You're through. Here through. Hold on a second. So we're getting that in there, right? There you go. There you go. So I weren't happy with this front bit here. Hold that a second. Right, now the back one. Am I going out of shot slightly? Sorry if I am. My apologies. Okay. Can hold that like that. And then we're good to go. We'll give the windscreen a clean. Give it a bit of a buff up. And pop it your uncle. And we'll be done. Okay, just give that a minute then and we'll get it on the magic. This is what we started with. Dinky toys at Rapier Nash. Or Nash Rapier, whichever way brand you want to say it. It's an old one. So now, <clears throat> see how it turned out. Have a look at this. Feast your eyes on this bad boy. Here we are then. This is our... Um, Basic, early dinky toys. Fraser Nash, done sympathetically. Has come out of the factory. Just the grill and the lights painted. New windscreen, new tyres. Everything else.
Painted in the blue with the grey seats, black steering wheel. Yeah, it's just nice to do a, a simple one now and again. Except for the slight adjustment I had to make on the windscreen to get it fit right down into the slot. Because if you don't get it in the slot, it uh, it moves around. And you don't want that. Okay. Well then. Thanks for watching. Look forward to your comments as always. And, like I like to say, take it easy. Be happy. Enjoy what you're doing. And we'll see you all again next week with another restoration. See you later. Bye for now.